Uh, good afternoon. A couple of opening remarks before I turn it over to our primary speaker, Jason Radula, who's the Assistant Enforcement Chief for the DLNR Division of Conservation and Resources Enforcement, or DOCARE. Um, the accurate number, and I think some of us have had it right, and if we had it wrong, I'm sorry, but the accurate number of people actually injured on the Lava Ocean Tours vessel this morning was, was 23. And for uh, the TV stations in particular, I want to call your attention to the video link at the end. Um, that is a Facebook vote video that was provided by Hawaiian Lava Boat Tours and Ikaika Marzo. They were quite a ways offshore. Apparently there was the first explosion that involved the other uh, boat and then there was a second explosion. The video you see on that is actually the second explosion, which he figured was about 60 seconds after the first one. It gives you an idea of kind of what was going on along the coastline. And with that, our speaker again is Jason Radula, Assistant Enforcement Chief for Dokio. Jason, thanks. All right, good afternoon. My name is Jason Redula. I'm the Deputy Enforcement Chief with DLNR's Division of Conservation and Resources Enforcement. Just have a brief update. This morning, officers with the Division of Conservation and Resources Enforcement, along with Hawaii County First Responders, responded to a report of an incident involving a commercial tour vessel, uh, which was operating in the area of the Kapoho Ocean Lava Entry. Apparently there was some sort of volcanic explosive event that caused hot molten lava to be hurled upon the vessel, causing numerous injuries to the persons on board. Right now we do know that in excess of 20 people have been injured. One has been injured seriously, others are on a more minor scope. Um, there is a multi-agency investigation occurring, which includes our partners at the U.S. Coast Guard, the Hawaii County Police Department and the Division of Conservation and Resources Enforcement. I want to stress that at this time, this investigation is in the very early stages and therefore we'll have no comment to make as far as what the investigation is looking like or any of the findings thus far. Um, I'll be happy to take any questions that you have. What is, what is the limit? How far can you, or how close can you let's get? Uh, I'll let the Coast Guard comment further on that. However, we do know that the captain of the port has declared a safety zone of 300 meters uh, from the ocean entry. Do we have any indication that this boat was within that? Not, not at this point. Right now, that's currently under investigation. It's one of the things that we'll be looking at. Um, we don't know at this point. Uh, it's still premature to, uh, to conclude that. Can you confirm, just for clarity, because there was confusion this morning, so which tour boat, tour boat company was involved in the incident? Lava Ocean Tours. It's uh, Hawaiian Lava Ocean Tours. Just Lava Ocean Tours. Lava Ocean Tours, sorry. You mentioned uh, uh, Marzo. How is he involved in this? So at this point, I'm not directly sure how Mr. Marzo is involved. However, he did provide a uh, video which is uh, within the, the written press release. There's a link to the video. Who is allowed to operate inside the safety zone? So right now, the uh, Division of Boating and Ocean Recreation has issued permits to, I believe, four vendors to operate within, to actually operate lava boat tours. Um, and they, they have to comply with the captain of the port safety zone and, and those requirements. Is the Lava Ocean Tours one of the four? Yes. And these four vendors can get up to 50 meters in the uh, Right now, the captain of the port safety zone is 300 meters, so they cannot come closer than 300 meters from the lava entry. But it's our understanding that some boats weren't given permission to get even closer than those three. You know, at this point, I don't know whether that's true or not. We'll have to defer to the Coast Guard on that. Can you talk at all about any of the injuries we sustained? I know, you know, what's been going on right now. I don't want to go into too much detail. However, we do know that at least one person was very seriously injured uh, and the others uh, on, a, on a more lesser scope, uh, particularly burns, those kinds of things. Uh, one person, though, was uh, pretty critically injured. So 23 people were injured, but how many people were on the boat total? Uh, we don't know the exact number at this point. Um, that, that's still something that we're looking at. So what is the process um, if a boat tour would like to go closer, you know, within the safety zone? How would they go about doing that? 
Uh, that's something that I'll defer to the Coast Guard on, but more than likely that's going to require Coast Guard permission. Has there been any discussion with the Coast Guard to push that safety zone even further out? I'm not aware of any of those discussions at this point. Does the LNR want to do that? You know, um, I, I don't think the department has a position on that at this point. That's something that we'll definitely be looking at. Uh, but also, we're, we're going to consult with our partners at the Coast Guard to determine the feasibility of that. If the boat was found uh, in fault, what criminal violations You know, it's premature at this point to discuss what violations might be found out of this. Um, the investigation is going to determine several things, including whether or not there are any violations of federal or state law. Um, what violations would bring their permit uh, from Uh You know, there are permit conditions. Um, whether or not any of those conditions were violated is part of the investigation, so it's too early to comment on that. on land uh, just so that the tourists can come or visitors can, uh, can residents can, can come see the lava from a safe point of view. Can you talk at all about that, about what the department's position is on safe viewing? You know, at this point, the department encourages the public to follow all of the, the emergency rules that are in effect and all of the directions from the Civil Defense Agency, uh, which basically means view lava at a very safe distance. Uh, do not go into the restricted areas unless you have the proper authorization to do so. So really it is a, um, a, a very individual uh, compliance thing where everybody needs to be responsible for their, their own safety and to follow all of the laws, regulations, and get the necessary approvals. Can you tell us what the fines are though? If, if let's say uh, uh, something is, goes beyond the Coast Guard safety zone? Specifically what that is. So I cannot comment as far as the penalty for violating a Coast Guard safety zone. That's something that I'll defer to the Coast Guard on. Um, but at this point, if state law was violated, uh, it'll depend on what law was actually violated to determine what the penalty is going to be. Is there always a vessel out there monitoring what's happening as far as boats maintaining no. the distance? No, there is no actual law enforcement presence that's out there, and that's why. It's really uh, dependent on the boat captains to make sure that they're operating within the scope of the captain of the port security zone or safety zone. Has there been any video shared with the LNR from the people that were on the boat that was hit? Uh, you know, not at this point. I'm not aware of it, so I'm, I'm not sure. Can you tell us what the uh, the permit rules are? You know, for having the permit, what the uh, regulations are. So, if you have this permit. What do you have to abide by? You know what, I'm not going to go into details on the, the permit because I don't have that information. That's something that our uh, Division of Boating and Ocean Recreation has. Uh, so I'm not going to comment on that. As far as the land uh, viewing sites, is DLNR going to set something up where you can come if you uh, You know, at this point, I'm not aware of whether or not the LNR is going to do anything in that regards. That's something that uh, I think is going to warrant more discussion with the county. And can you describe the lava bubble? Was it a single one, or you said there were two explosions? You know, right now all of that is is, is still very fluid. We're, we're not sure whether it was just one occurrence or, or more than one occurrence. Uh, we do know that what occurred is that hot molten lava rock was hurled upon the vessel uh, that, that caused these injuries. As far as whether it was one incident or, or multiple incidents, uh, we're going to have to leave that to the investigation. Typically though, when you have these lava bombs, can you describe how they, they you know, how is it that they're ejected? You know, that's kind of uh, outside my purview. I'm not really a geologist, I'm a cop, so okay. I can't really answer that. Is it Lava Ocean Tours owned and operated by Shane Turpin? Have you, have you talked to Shane? You know, I'm not going to comment as to uh, 
who owns it or who we've talked to at this point. Was he injured? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. Do they have any violations in their history? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. And then, uh, do, we, do we know for sure how many uh, of the people that were injured were hospitalized or admitted? I don't know that we have those numbers. What we do know is that in excess of 20 people were injured. You said seriously, and then in another sentence you said critically. Are you saying seriously or critically? I'm saying very seriously. Very seriously. Is the safety zone being changed after this incident? Uh, I can't comment on that. You have to ask the Coast Guard. So they're not attending this press conference. Are they going to hold their own? You know, you're not aware of probably. I don't speak for the Coast Guard, so I have no idea. Just, just to clarify everyone, for you know, patient conditions, you really need to call the Medical Center. Once they get to the hospital, it's out of our, out of our realm of authority. So. But I believe four were treated at the hospital. I don't know how many were actually admitted. Certainly the one serious injury that Jason had. You want me to go say that? It'd be better to say it. So again, any information on the, the people who were injured, you should call the Hilo Medical Center or the Hawaii Fire Department uh, because some of them were uh, taken to the hospital in ambulance. Um, it looks like nine went to the hospital in private vehicles. There were four that were transported by ambulance to the Hilo Medical Center. Um, we don't know how many of those folks were admitted. You can assume that the, the one woman who was seriously injured was, was admitted to the hospital, but beyond that, we don't have any information. There's no way of uh, knowing whether which ones were local, which ones were hers? No, we've had that question uh, about nationalities. That's not something we would ferret out during our investigation. Again, the, the hospital may be able to help you with that. So you have an age, uh, it's a woman that was... A 20 year, 20 year old woman 20 -year -old. is what the Hawaii Fire Department reported. Yeah. And uh, traumatic injuries to her leg is the extent of the injuries. Heard reports of a broken leg. Um, again, you'd have to check with the hospital on that. Is it, is it currently, sorry, is, is the area currently open to continue tours at this point? I'm not sure what the status of the safety zone is at this point. You have to ask the Coast Guard. Is there anything else um, the DLR can uh, give us, you know, uh, any other information that you guys would need to share? Not at this point. Again, the investigation is currently underway. Multiple agencies involved, and we're really in the early stages, so we haven't, um, we, we can't really uh, discuss what any of the findings are at this point. Um, I'm sure we're going to know more as the investigation progresses. Would there ever be an incident uh, where it's so serious with violations that DLNR would make an arrest immediately? Or? No, I don't want to comment on that at this point. Needless to say that the investigation. It's going to determine several things and whether there was a violation of state law that could result in an arrest is something that um, we'll have to see. If there was nobody out there watching or monitoring outside the boat itself, how could you determine where the boat was and what happened? Well, I don't want to go into um, detail on that other than to say that there are uh, various investigative techniques that we can employ. Going forward, will DLNR be changing any of its policies when allowing boats to get close to this level? Uh, I think that's something that um, the department will have to look at and, and further, make further consideration of. Too early to say. I have a question about the four. Um, how, you know, if another boat company, tour boat company, wanted to get They would have to contact our Division of Boating and Ocean Recreation. Um, that's, that's something that our boating division would have to look into. And can you tell me, um, you know, the differences between, you know, these four operating companies and the rest of the operating companies, so what um, uh, licenses they have to do when they can do so? You know, that's not really something I can discuss. It's kind of out of my purview. That would be a uh, Division of Ocean and Boating the origin of boating and ocean recreation question. Is there an actual map that outlines the restricted areas and where they are both on land and on the ocean? I believe there is maps. Um, you would have to defer to the Coast Guard on that though. 
Because DLNR is enforcing the restriction, correct? You got uh, DLNR handles citing. So DLNR is enforcing state laws as it pertains to the state's near shore waters. We are involved in enforcing the state's boating regulations. To be clear, the captain of the port's safety zone is a federal order issued by the captain of the port. The primary enforcement of it comes from the United States Coast Guard. Have you cited anyone? Any boat operators? I'm not aware of any citations at this point. I don't know the specifics on that, but needless to say, it's very important that they heed the captain of the port's safety zone order. They have to stay that minimum distance away from the entry. Okay. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks.